Whoa. Holy sh What the f Oh my gosh. Oh no, dude. This week, we are traveling to one of Utah's most impressive mountain ranges. Instead of our typical mode of transportation, however, we're taking side-by-sides. Having moved to Utah last January, I was excited to explore the trout fishing opportunities that awaited. I've been fortunate enough to fish in various regions across the West, but have done little fishing in my new home state. So after doing some research, there was one range in particular that caught my attention. The Uintas. The Uinta Mountain Range was established in 1897, marking the state's first national forest. It extends over 460,000 acres, making it the largest wilderness area in the state. There are well over a thousand natural lakes and over 400 miles of streams. On top of that, it is the highest region of Utah. But what's really interesting is it's the only major range in the contiguous United States with an east to west orientation. This uplift was caused by reverse faults that meet below the range on the north and south. On average, the Uintas receive over twice the amount of precipitation compared to the rest of the state. And for most of the year, they're covered in snow. During the last ice age, most of the large stream valleys that are present today were filled with long valley glaciers. With elevations of over 13,000 feet, its climate is classified as subarctic. This type of climate offers some of the most extreme seasonal temperature variations found on the planet. And here, there is no dry season. There are many fish species that populate the Uintas. Most have been stalked by humans over the years, but there is one species that is truly native to this range, the cutthroat. And this is what we're after. But ultimately, our goal is to travel safely through the backcountry by staying on trails, respecting wildlife, and leaving it just as pristine for those who come after us. Joining me on this trip is none other than my buddy Adam, fish whisperer and the master behind Blue Line Flies. So we left our gummy bears in the bed of the Polaris yesterday, and now we have gummy bear amalgamation. Then we've got my buddy Colby, a Utah local and certified trout junkie who knows more about the fishing in Utah than anyone I know. You'll get these bigger guys. They build these big, huge cases out of rocks. And coming along to document it all is my talented filmmaking friend, Will Phelps. <laughs> With the crew assembled, it was time to get to it. We are rolling up to uh, Ridgeline Rentals right now. We're going to pick up two side-by-sides for this week. You'll see they haven't touched dirt yet. Dude, those are badass. So they are ready to rip and roll. To our luck, we'd be the first ones to drive these brand new Rangers. Have fun, be safe, catch the fish. With our gear packed and the side-by-sides on the trailer, we were ready to hit the trail.
So we just rolled up to the parking lot uh, where we're gonna leave the truck and the trailer, and then we're gonna, just gonna take the side-by-sides from here. But this is a fee area where we have to pay to park, so we're gonna fill out these. Make sure when you're pulling into spots like this that you stop and read a lot of these signs. Uh, they'll also have, as you kind of see behind me, they'll have like a spot to put notifications and things like that. So it's always good to stop and just make sure that you're following all the regulations, since the regulations do sometimes change from spot to spot. From here, we had roughly a two hour drive to the valley we planned to fish. So with the truck parked and the side-by-sides loaded up, it was time to have some fun. Oh, I think it's a half backwards kind of day, boys. We're getting our first eyes in the water right now, finally up close. So hopefully we we'll find a campsite here soon and uh, we'll be ready to fish tonight. One of the important things when you're coming out here, you know, to find a campsite and everything, there's no human development out here and it's pristine wilderness. And we don't want to do anything to disrupt that. So we're just gonna look for a spot that's already been set up for a campsite and uh, try to leave the least amount of impact on the place we can. Got a nice little setup. Already got some chairs out here, some nice cut logs. We got some clean running water right here. It's as good as you, I think you can get. It smells good, I'm told. That's me. Oh, Mike's never mind, Colby's here, so. <laughs> that one's got a two-seater for Adam. Oh yeah, that's, they even made one for Husky Daddy right here. <laughs> just my size. <laughs> been looking at this trip for a long time and we've been scouring the internet both with a couple different of the mapping apps and there's like three drainages here that we're really excited about that have rivers in them but one of the coolest things is that we got these side by side so that we can just kind of rip up and down the road to be able to figure out different areas different stretches of water that are holding fish Day one at our first spot. Kind of been covering the water pretty good since there's three of us fishing. We've got uh, one of us is running some dries really high on the surface. We've got one of us who's kind of bouncing bottoms with uh, nymphs. And then we've got another guy that's running streamers or like little bait fish patterns. And uh, we haven't had any luck yet. We drove really far up this uh, canyon. So I'm not sure if the water's like a little too cold. Maybe it just hasn't been hot enough. So maybe these fish are a little further down river from where we're at. There's like barely any bugs. Typically you can kind of find some aquatic insects on the bottom of these rocks in the river, but doesn't seem to be any, any bugs right here. Being that it was still early summer, the water levels were high and the bug life was minimal. Colby managed to find a small brook trout, but that was the extent of our luck. 
We had come pretty high up the river system, so we planned to head downstream the next morning. There's nothing to warm you up like some breakfast. We've got some bacon and eggs. We're gonna do breakfast burritos with. So, uh, you didn't mess around. We're gonna do that and then we're gonna go fishing. Big old tacos. We're using the Polaris today to kind of pull hop from spot to spot and look for some good water, some good riffles. It's going to hold some good cutthroat in it and uh, just find some good fishy water. Move downstream today, try a new section out. Adam, Colby, and I are all splitting up right now, and we're all fishing different rigs because, you know, when we come to a new place like this, we don't have it figured out. We don't know what's working, we don't know what sort of bugs are coming off yet. So we're just each trying something different, and hopefully, that'll help us kind of dial it in and kind of figure this river out. So these fish that we're chasing up here are some native cutthroat trout. It's pretty cool because there's four different subspecies of cutthroats here in Utah. I believe these are the Colorado strain. So this drainage that we're on eventually ends up somewhere in the Colorado River. These fish though really tend to like uh, a lot of this colder water. They'll, they'll survive elsewhere, but these high alpine streams and super, super cold runoff rivers, that's where they thrive. That might have been a cut. I don't know. I think you're making stuff up, Scotty. I might be. Oh, yeah. There you go. Ooh, white fish. There you go. White fish. Um, are actually really good indicator species of streams. So that's always a good indication for the cutthroat population or whatever other trout that are in their stream. And if you start running into whitefish, usually it's a good sign that you're in the right spot. So we've been sitting on this area for a minute. I uh, kind of slowed down, started watching the water a little bit, looked for what they were eating, started noticing some fish rising. I was gonna cast like up this way, down, but oh, there was an E. That was an E. Oh, there was another one. They're all in here, dude. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> First cast, baby. Yeah, that's a cut. Look at those colors, man.
automatic. Yep, right there. There he is. Yeah, that's a cut. <laughs> nah, we're finding them. Awesome cut here. Right on the bank, just hammer it. So we're flipping over some rocks here. Uh, just kind of see what's in the water. Uh, generally around this time of year in the area that we're at, we get a lot of caddis, a lot of mayflies. It's kind of typical for that early, early summer hatches. And you can see here, you can usually tell caddis, they build a case when they're in these little larval stages. Sometimes they'll use this like more of a stick material, just a little tiny case caddis. And then you'll, you'll get these bigger guys that uh, they build these big, huge cases out of rocks and whatever they can find on the river. So pretty easy for the fish to spot and it's a great food source. Trout really key in on caddis. So yeah, we'll keep flipping over some rocks and see what we can find and hopefully get these trout to, to come up to the top and eat some flies. Yes, sir. Oh. oh. Yeah, dude. Where we're fishing right now, there is a confluence between about three rivers within a mile. And we just split off from the other guys. Adam and I wanted to come down here and check out a new part of the stream. You know, today's been mainly a scouting day. So we've kind of just been moving to a bunch of spots, trying to get a feel for this area because there is so much river. So instead of spending all of our time focusing on one area, trying to make our bugs work, we're trying to bounce around and uh, see where the fish are. surface. It's kind of what we figured for this area. What a day. Well, fellas, we, we had a day. day. I don't know if y'all had fun, but we had, we had it. <laughs> If you guys just saw our Alaska film, we uh, brought back some salmon and we got some moose meat while we were there as well. So we brought some of that here tonight and uh, we're ready to chow down.
got some bacon that we're gonna wrap our moose steaks in. And then we also have some rice that we're gonna add a little bit of chicken in to get that extra protein with that rice to fill us up. We also have some veggies that we're gonna toss in that rice as well. Bacon wrapped moose steaks. Oh, yes, yes, please. Big time Biden. If you can't control the fish, control the food. But you can control the fish, can't you? <laughs> I mean, I can, but some others others may not be able to. Now I'm, my standards are lift, have been lifted. Mm -hmm. If it's not wrapped in bacon, I'm not eating it. I'm not interested. <laughs> We're uh, just finishing up dinner, settled in for a nice and lovely evening, and all of a sudden we started <laughs> thunder. The wind picked up. I mean, went from zero to sixty like that. We're gonna get hit. The wind and rain are starting to pick up, and. Uh, doesn't look like this is stopping anytime soon. Well, so the storm that was rolling in last night ended up hitting us and uh, pretty much rained all night. We uh, were planning to get out and fish pretty early today, but it is really hard to get out of a dry tent into the rain at like 6 a.m. rolled up to the river and we're about to go start fishing but I want to show y'all what we're using typically for a stream like this I like fishing a nine foot five weight so we've got a nine five five weight reel that kind of covers everything it's a pretty universal rod and you can literally fish this just about anywhere so we're in a pretty simple tapered leader we've got one of the blue line leaders which I'll have linked below if you guys want to check it out it's basically just 20 pound to 15 pound to a swivel and then we're running 3X off of that to our first fly. The last couple days, we've been fishing some of these bigger dry flies, some chubbies, some stimulators, uh, just kind of some attractor patterns, just to kind of get a feel for if these fish are interested in coming up, to eat anything on top. And then as we've started to see more bugs, we've kind of dialed it in, you know, started to downsize and actually start using um, some specific dries like caddises, we use some parachute atoms, and even some golden stones. What we've been fishing is just a simple puffy caddis like this. I also like to run a smaller dry off the back just in case some fish are keying in on those smaller bugs. So pretty much anywhere you go with trout fishing, you know, we're trying to imitate three basic aquatic insects, stoneflies, mayflies, and caddis. So I think it's very easy to overcomplicate it in fly fishing and think you have to have all the right flies, but if you can kind of just keep it simple, stick to your caddis, you know, have some smaller mayflies, a variety of sizes, and then have some stoneflies. In your box that's typically what we bring and we don't you know go too nerdy on it if we get to some deeper holes and they're not keying in on these dry flies typically we'll cut this bottom part off add some tippet and we'll throw a dropper nymph on that way we can present some flies for some of the fish that are sitting down deep and maybe just feeding on subsurface insects so that's the rig for the day let's go hit the river
we go. This little brick trout. Textbook. We like this new spot. We kind of scoped it out a little bit yesterday. It's got a rocky bottom. Hopefully there's some slower water, some pockets and pools that we can cast in. It's mostly where we've been finding our fish. So we definitely got a lot of riffles to keep the water oxygenated. There should be a lot of bug life in this canyon. We'll just keep working our way up, fishing this seam off this main channel right here. Get up right below this next set of riffles. All right, there's a fish over here by this log. You just know it. Oh! Came up and swiped at the dry. It's always nice to, to slow down when you're on these rivers and uh, really work a spot from left to right or right to left. Make sure you're covering all the water. You're not just casting the juiciest part of the hole. There we go. Nice little cut through. Just as we found out the night before, the weather in the Uintas can change in a split second. Well, we got some interesting weather moving in right now. Well, so I think we're gonna head to a different spot we haven't been to yet, a little further down the river system. It is away from this rain. So we're gonna head towards those clear, clearer skies and uh, hopefully we can find some fish over there. found a bridge. Just gonna kind of wait out this storm and hopefully this will move through before too long. As quickly as the storm had moved in, it was gone. Where, what would your, be your take on sculpin here? You think there's... Oh, I, I wouldn't doubt it. We re-rigged and found a trail that took us down to the river. This whole trip, we had been working downstream, and it seemed like the further we went down, the more fish we ran into. Gosh, that was sick. Dude, that is a, that's a stellar fish. I'm happy with that.
that, that fly placement is as good as it gets. Adam, you had a chase. Right there? Yeah. We're up here watching Adam fish and he's come over with the streamer and it's absolutely tearing him up. Right. Yeah, out. and then once we're done, we'll uh, we can throw it all in my garage to dry out. Adam, what's about to hit us? What's going so on? we've got a huge thunderstorm coming that is not going to let up until tomorrow evening. I think we can get out of here. We're going to have wet gear regardless whether we stay or go. But at least uh, I think we could get out of the rain tonight. It was clear skies like five minutes ago, and this storm has just rolled in. We just checked the forecast. We got a little bit of service, and it's not looking good. Oh no, dude. Oh sh Whoa, dude. Wow. Well, the stuff will leave. Here's where the root came out from the tree. And that's our camp right there. That literally would have killed somebody if we were in the tents. Wow. We are we're super lucky that we, we were not here. This tree could have fallen at any time, including the night before when we were asleep. As rattling as it was, it highlighted how important it is to be aware of your surroundings in the wilderness. It's easy to let the excitement of fishing distract you from taking proper precautions when setting up your campsite. And in our case, it could have costed us our lives. Well, we are super lucky to have escaped this, no harm, but man, careful out there, folks. We don't want this to deter anyone from getting out in the wilderness, but we do hope that you can learn from this so you don't make the same mistake that we did.
Unfortunately, every storm passes. And with our trip through the Uintas getting cut a day short, we thought it was only right to drive up a different canyon and spend one last day on the water. There he is. There we go. Cutty on a drive by. This trip really opened my eyes to how much there is to explore in my new home state. We spent three days in a range that I'd never even heard of until I moved out here. And the truth is, we barely scratched the surface. On a trip like this, you can only fish so many spots. And often, the ones that you don't get to keep you curious. And that is what excites me the most. There's always another bend to see and always another trip to plan. And if any of you are wanting to plan your next trip, whether it's in Utah or not, please do your part in planning ahead. Look into the local regulations, travel responsibly, and do your best to leave no trace so we can keep the wild places that we explore forever mighty.